the other day I made a video about FGM and I was talking about FGM in Kenya but truthfully this is a widespread enough phenomenon it didn't get very many views because sometimes these types of comment I mean these types of videos don't get many spins but I do believe that this is important to speak about because it continues the conversation that women and girls were born simply subservient or second-class citizens or honestly speaking we're born on the level of a goat one of the women on my post said that the idea of FGM is that if a woman can't enjoy SEX they won't cheat on their husbands and she said, yes, is to control a woman's um, sexuality. So basically, a woman, once she is given a lot of times for some money to a man, she is no longer her own person and not supposed to experience anything pleasurable from that point forward. We are born to basically be controlled by and used by somebody else. And this is there there are degrees of all of this in many different countries it is not just in on the african continent there are many places where women are not fully and actualized humans i do want to talk a little bit about the historical and cultural implications of fgm the history of FGM is not well known, but the practice dated back to at least 2,000 years. It is not known when or where the tradition of FGM originated. It was believed that it was practiced as an um, ancient Egypt as a sign of distinction among aristocracy. Some believe it started during the slave trade when black slave women entered ancient Arab societies. Some believe FGM began with the arrival of Islam in some parts of sub-Saharan sub Africa. Some believe the practice developed independently among ethnic groups in sub-Saharan Africa as part of puberty rights. Overall, the history, it was believed that FGM would ensure women's virginity and reduction in female desire. In the middle paragraph, the practice is supported by traditional beliefs, values, and attitudes. In some communities, it is valued as a rite of passage to womanhood. For example, in Kenya and Sierra Leone, other, other value it as a means of preserving a girl's virginity until marriage. For example, Sudan, Egypt, and Somalia. In most of these countries, FGM is a prerequisite to marriage. And marriage is vital to a woman's social and economic survival. They do this to survive because being born with a uterus basically means that you are automatically put at a disadvantage in many countries. It is believed by some African women that if their daughters are not um, cut, they would not get husbands. This, this FGM harmful tradition has been guided by taboos from generation to generation. So it's, I don't know where it's written, but this is not for any health benefit. This is to basically just control women and girls. And this just goes back to the, the use of, the use of religion to edify males. And this is cultural, it's um, beyond any particular religion because any of these male worshiping um, cultures they do some degrees of rele relegating women and girls to second class citizenry or not even basically giving us the rights to our own humanity. The way girls are given husbands at like the age of nine in some cultures and then basically given to these men once they start their period. It just like it, and you know, this is all in exchange for a goat or money or trinkets. It does put women and girls on par with being a goat. These women and girls have no agency in being able to choose the life that they lead. They are now basically property of these men that their parents have decided for them from the time that they're children. So girls have no childhood. They are basically birthed to be servants. They're birthed to be servants. And then they're birthed to be the, um, the incubators to these men 
that give trinkets, goats, or whatever for their bodies at like the age of nine. And then these men get them forever. And then on top of that, because of FGM, they don't get any pleasure. So at no point in time do many women and girls get to enjoy life because they are basically a goat or a cow that is being used for breeding purposes, cleaning purposes, and for the desires of males. And, you know, the continuation of these harmful traditions being upheld by the women in the community, many times the cuts are being done by the women in the communities. They are perpetuating these harmful traditions that aren't rooted in anything outside of continuing to keep women and girls at a lower position. These things need to be discussed because globally, we women and girls are not free. Here in America, we have gotten some freedom, at least coverture laws where we did belong to our fathers or husbands have been repealed. But our feminist movement only got us these few um, rights and freedoms within the last two generations. So everything that we have is still in very early um very early into these situations. We just got these freedoms. So they could easily be stripped away by um, these men in charge and by women upholding these positions. I say that to say that we need to continue to speak on the lot where women and girls are still facing now and the, the lack of safety, the lack of security, um, the fact that they could just be traded for trinkets simply because they were born with the uterus. We need to continue these conversations because while if one of us isn't free, we're all not free. And so many of us could very easily see ourselves back in these positions. The fact that if you look down at the bottom, marriage ability um, is placed on a woman being this pure. This purity culture extends globally. You know, we have our own purity culture here in the United States, and it's all based on patriarchy. And what can we do for these males? And how are we making ourselves more desirable for these males? So basically, we have got to continue to bring more opportunities, safety, and security to girls and women worldwide so that our marriage ability and survival aren't based on being harmed and being disfigured. You guys go ahead and let me know what you think about this. Jump in the comments, like, comment, share.